Thank God! It's a Monday! Hello po muli sa inyong lahat at welcome sa Monday edition ng The Stock Market Today. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Ben G. Chidaro. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine Stock Market noong 2007 at ginagawa ko po itong report araw-araw which I started August of last year. At uh, meron din po kong uh, nire-report na latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. And if you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you have stocks in mind that you want reviewed, please comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Ang balita po natin ay tungkol sa Converge at may special report po tayo sa tennis pair na si Alex Ayala at si Oksana Selekmekteva. At ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, June 14, 2021, dito lamang sa the stock market today. Don't go away. Okay, pumunta na po tayo dito sa ating special report. Good news po muna tayo from the Acquire.net. Alex Ayala and Russian partner win French Open Girls Double Crown. Junior Spaleto. Manila, Philippines. With some excellent net game and steely nerves, Alex Ayala of the Philippines and Oksana Selekmekteva of Russia ruled the French Open Girls Doubles Finals Saturday night. The tandem rank first defeated eight seeds Maria Bordarenko of Russia and Amarisa Karathoth of Hungary 6-0 and 7-5 right on their second final appearance. They handily bugged the first set only to see their opponents clawing back to take a 4-2 lead but soon Ayala and Selek Meteva found their touch falling off volley smash to get out of tough buying. So ito po ang mga pictures nila. Uh, fittingly, it ended on Ayala's strong serve game with Selek Meteva hitting championship point by the net. It showed the maturity of their partnership which had even proved its mettle when they made finals in the W25 Plata de Aro in Spain last month. Together, they dethroned defending champions Eleonora Alvisi and Lisa Pigato of Italy 6-2-6-1 on Friday to make the finals. That is after pulling up a squeaker of their fifth seeds Petra Marcinko of Croatia and Natalia Sherbanin of Hungary in the quarterfinals. So that's uh, good news for Alex Ayala and Oksana. So congratulations to you both and I hope you continue your winning streaks and um, I hope to see you soon in the upcoming tournaments. So let's now go to our next uh, news. Tungkol sa Converge, no? Philstar Global, Converge joins two global stock market indices. Listed broadband services provider Converge ICT Solutions Inc. joined two indices in London's Financial Times Stock Market Exchange, a move seen helping the company grow its clout among international investors. In a disclosure to the local bourse on Monday, Converge said that it was included in the FTSE Renaissance IPO Index and FSTE ASEAN All Share Index less than a year since the company went public. FTSE is a unit of the London Stock Exchange. The FTSE Renaissance IPO Index introduces investors to attractive IPO markets around the world. Qualified companies which are screened for size, liquidity, and free float on a quarterly basis are added to the group and eventually removed after around two years when they become seasoned equities. 
Meanwhile, the regional FTSE ASEAN All Share Index is a partnership between FTSE and seven stock markets in Southeast Asia. It covers small, mid, and large companies listed in these markets. So that's our second news for the day. And perhaps we add one more bit of news also from Philstar. This is on Metro Pacific because I think this is also a significant news item that I'd want to share to you. Ito po yung MPIC remains keen on Sangli Airport. Ito po yung uh, plan B ni Metro Pacific on, Sangli, on the Sangli Airport. Infrastructure conglomerate Metro Pacific Investments Corp is among the companies that are in the running to submit a bid for the Sangli Point International Airport or SPIA. MPIC Chairman Manny Pangilinan told Star, the company remains keen on the development of SPIA, having already purchased bid documents for the massive airport development project. Yes, we have bought the, the bid documents, Pangilinan said. We are interested in principle, but no commitments at this time. Pangilinan earlier, earlier told the Star that the SPIA project looks interesting for the infrastructure conglomerate particularly because the airport connects to the company's southern tollways. MPIC is one or was one of the companies that purchased bid documents for the SPIA project during its first auction in 2019, but eventually did not submit an actual bid. In the first bidding of the SPI project, the consortium of Lusitan's Macro Asia Group and China Communications Construction Company Limited emerged victorious submitting the sole bid. The airport deal awarded to the consortium, however, was terminated last January due to the various deficiencies on the submission of requirements to conclude a joint venture agreement prompting the provincial government of Cavite to start anew with its search for a partner. A total of three companies have bought B documents for the second bidding of the massive airport project as of last month. The new deadline has been set to June 28, meaning interested parties will be allowed to register as a candidate joint venture partners and purchase the bid documents up to the said date. Okay, so that's our <coughs> news item for the day, both Converge, MPIC, and a bit of sports in in the Roland Garros uh, 2021. So let's now take a look at what happened to the Philippine Stock Exchange Index. Okay, the PSEI gained 9.70 points or 0.14% to end at 69.17.49. So as you can see, our indicators are bullish as our 20, 50, and 100 days are, one, are under the candlestick. And our RSI is at 71, which is bullish, but already approaching overbought levels. So if we'll take a look at our market activity, 117 companies advanced, 91 declined, while 54 remained unchanged. The All Share Index registered a 0.40% rise, while the sectoral indices ended mixed. The financials, industrials, and services are in the green, while the holding companies, mining, and properties were in the red. The gainers was led by the financials at 1.35%. However, the increase of the sectors in the green were slightly higher than those that were in the red, and hence, the PSEI ended on a positive note. So let's now take a look at the most active stocks and we'll be reviewing the top 10. That's uh, BDO, Ali, DNL, JFC, Ever, BPI, ASEN, Glow, ICT, and BHI. So let us, let's now go to the first uh, stock, BDO. Lumilipad siguro itong si BDO. Yes, it ended at 114. And it is on the highest level. And it has been moving upwards. It is very bullish, I would say. 
since the RSI is already at 70 and it has reached the resistance level. So ang resistance level po niya is uh, 115 pero nasa area of resistance na po si BDO. So it's possible na magpatuloy uh, pa rin na umakyat si BDO as the stock is bullish. And then si Ali. Okay, Ali had a red candlestick today, nag profit taking siya, losing 1.25 or 3.26% down. Pero bullish pa rin po ang stock as our indicators are under the candlestick. The next resistance point that uh, we can consider would be dito po. So 39.80 to 39.90, yung next resistance level ni Ali. And then after Ali, DNL. Okay, DNL also ended in the uh, red. However, still bullish as uh, our indicators are still under the candlestick. So abangan lang po natin dahil three successive red candlestick and I think this is a weak candlestick, a weak red candlestick. It can go either way, either bumaba siya or mag-consolidate before moving upwards. The next uh, resistance level, I think this is the highest. Oh no, the highest is here. Let's uh, use the um, one-week chart. Okay, if we'll take a look at the one-week chart, yung next uh, resistance level niya, ay nandito po, 8.40 to 8.50, yung next resistance level ni DNL. And it is uh, still, we can consider the stock bullish. And then after DNL, JFC. Okay, JFC continues to move upwards. It's now at 207.20. And tingnan nyo po yung line up ng ating candlestick. Near the candlestick is the 20-day, next is the 50 and 100-day exponential moving average with a definite trend. Yan po yung definite trend pagka nakaline up pong ganyan yung ating candlesticks. And the RSI is uh, bullish already, konting ingat lang. Based on the technicals, this is already overbought. Pero there is a definite trend on JFC. And uh, I think this is already resistance level as it is nearing this level na. Mga 111, actually resistance um, area na po ito. Mga 110, 111 is resistance area already. So the next after that, let's use the one week chart, would be here. Ito po yung nakikita ko. Yan. 111 po yung next resistance level ni Jollibee. 111 to 112 po. So I think this is already approaching resistance levels. And the stock, though bullish, is uh, already approaching overbought levels. And then after JFC, Ever. Wow, look at that. May balita ba tayo kay Ever? Wala, no? But I really don't know what's happening to this stock. So, ito meron siyang volume eh. Tapos dito, meron pa rin volume. But, uh, why is the stock acting this way after being dormant for a very, very long time? Kasi, dito lang siya nag nagmamove eh. Sa 0.8 centavos, tapos naging 52. Wow, what's happening? Meron kayang... Well, meron naman, ano? Hindi naman illiquid ang stock. Pero may mga limited buyers and sellers. But I really don't know what's happening here in Ever. That's why the, the stock is acting this way. Guys, kung meron kayong balita, paki-comment lang po. Because I am not aware of any news item on Ever. So in the meantime, ano ba masasabi natin dito kay Ever? It is the 52-week high already, yung 56 centavos. So yung 52 is close to the 52-week high. And I cannot really plot no, kasi this is the highest level already. Eh. Pero yung support nandito lang po, pero malaya na po siya sa support eh. So, abang-abang lang po tayo dito kay Ever, overbought na po yung stock. Actually, this is a, a second liner. Bidden us, tingnan na natin. Meron naman, meron naman siyang liquidity. But, 
you know, after consolidating for a long, long time, eh, nagkaganito, there must be some catalyst. Okay? After ever, BPI. Okay, BPI continues to inch up. It gained 45 centavos today. Meron siyang dividend, 90 centavos, June 23 ang payment date niya. So, it continues to move upwards and the stock is bullish at 58. Pero it has been moving at this level for a for some time already. Balik natin sa one day. Yeah, no? It has been moving at this level. It is uh, actually bullish po. So the next resistance nandito po siya. Okay, natin dito sa 88.70 to 88.80. Now guys, once more, when I talk of support and resistance, these are not exact points. But these are areas. They are actually areas. So, yung 88.75 nakikita niyo po dito, hindi yun actually exactly 88.75. Meron po yung certain range of uh, support and resistance. And safe to say, it's between 88.70 to 88.80 or even some a, a, a bit wider, 88.60 to 88.90. Yun po yung, yung range of... Uh, resistance niya. Kaya yan po yung support and resistance. Wala po siyang exact point. Maaring lumagpas ng konti o mag-bounce siya sa mababang level but when I say 88.75 for example, hindi po yan exactly 88.75. Okay po. So, this is, this is still bullish as our indicators are under the candlestick and our RSI is also bullish at 62. Now, after BPI, ASEN. ASEN ended with 8 pesos, at 8 pesos, gaining 13 centavos. Pero ito nga yung sinasabi ko, ano? Alam nyo, itong ASEN, very unassuming to eh. Paunti-unti lang. Pero consistently siya na tumataas, oh. Before you know it, mataas na yung stock. And it has been moving at this level. No? Since uh, February this year, yan lang siya, oh. Within that level lang siya. But this time, the stock is already on the bullish side. Dahil yung ating indicators nasa ilalim. And the RSI is already high at 66 approaching overbought levels. So, yung Darvis box po natin is between 820 and the support is at 857. Pero tulad po ng sinasabi ko kanina, Ay, hindi po yan exact points, but these are areas. Okay, after ASEN, GLO. Gumagalaw na si GLO. Yan, nag-breakout siya. 1895. And it had a gap up. So, it gained 54 pesos. It opened higher at 1857. Kasi yung closing price po niya is 1841. So, nag-gap up po siya ng 1857. So, nag uh, low siya ng 1845 but still ended higher. Meron siyang volume. So, I expect the stock, kasi last time, meron siyang green candlestick with volume, ano? And pagka nakikita po natin yung ganitong scenario, kahit maliit na candlestick lang po siya, pero green at merong volume, asahan niya po yung susunod na mga araw, magkakaroon po yan ng surge. At nagkaroon nga ng surge si GLO today. So yung RSI niya is also bullish at 41. And the next, actually this is, it has reached resistance level. And the next level that we may want to consider would be here at, lagay natin dito sa 18, 1987. 1987 to 1988 po yung next possible resistance level ni Globe Telecoms. And then after Globe, ICT. Kumpanya ni Mr. Rason. Alam nyo, this ICT continues to move up. Kasi meron siyang trend. trend oh? And very strong yung trend. Pero based on fundamentals, 150 lang po yung pressure niyan. Eh. Kaya mag-ingat mag po tayo kasi mas... Actually po, mas pinapaburad ko po ang fundamentals kesa po sa technicals. Kasi fundamentals precedes the technicals. Pero 
you can ride the trend kasi very strong yung trend and yung opening ng uh, economy ICT is uh, very strong on that kasi container ports po yan eh yung pagte-trade po ng ating mga containers it, it's more of the shipping of uh, the terminals kaya po as uh, the world economy opens because of the vaccination as the, as the economy normalizes ay nagno-normalize din po ang negosyo ng ICT okay po let's check what's the highest level na plot ko ba to ayan I think this is the highest level already kasi na breach na po niya yung highest peak dito at 148 so konting ingat lang po kasi highest level na po ito and the stock is over overbought na nga ba Yan, overbought na po. So, baka magkaroon po ng reversal anytime soon. Pero as long as this is, this trend is moving upwards, eh, you can ride the trend. So, ang, ang aking resistance level, we follow the EMA20. And the current support level, rather, would be at 145.64 yung current support level following the EMA20. Draw nga natin ng channel. Kasi yan po yung channel niya eh. Following the EMA20. So yung lower channel is the EMA20 actually. So magbabounce off lang po dyan as long as there is a trend. Okay? Then BHI, our last stock. By the way, if you have stocks in mind that you want to review, please comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Okay, BHI is still bullish. It ended with the red today, but still bullish. The profit taking ito today before it continues its upward trend. Maari mag consolidate muna yan ng one, two, or several days. We don't know how long, but uh, as long as there is a strong and good positive sentiment, then the stock will continue to move upwards. So, in the meantime, ang support level niya, ito na ba yung highest level? Ito yung support niya. So, 11.77 centavos. Again, this is an area, hindi po yan exact point. So, the resistance level, tingnan natin kung meron resistance to. I think this is the highest level in a long while. Yes. Pero ang last, ang next resistance level niya, napakalayo na eh. Napakalayo na po niya. So, 2013 pa po yung highest level niyo, 21 centavos. Pero it's uh, it's very far already. Napakalayo na po nung next resistance niya based on the one-week chart. Yan po ang ating report sa stock market, June 14, 2021. Ito po si Benji Chitoro, nagpapaalala, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik at maraming po salamat sa mga nagsasubscribe. Hanggang sa muli, God bless and bye for now.